The church goes forth strong in faith. If we realize and if we know that we are a part of his government. I don't mean just a part of him. I mean a part of his government that has already been established above all rule and authority that we are here to set the captives free. Not just a special few. The responsibility and authority has been given to all men. Every born-again Christian is under heavenly obligation to heal the sick, to help the dying, to cast out the devil, and bring deliverance to those that are bound. Now, I know I'm going out on some limbs tonight, but I believe in apostolic authority. And here's what the Scripture has to say. So before you cut me off, just listen. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses. How many got the Holy Ghost? You're supposed to have power. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's power. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Notice all. Not just the twelve, not just the disciples, all. And Stephen, not an apostle, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And the people, with one accord, gave heed unto those things which Philip, not an apostle, spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Therefore, they were scattered abroad, not the apostles, but they went everywhere, preaching the word, and the Lord confirming it with signs wonder. Jesus that day in the synagogue quoted from Isaiah when he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel and to preach deliverance to the captive. And he applied it to himself. Now, let me talk to you. Please listen to me carefully because here is the gist of my sermon. If we share in his death his burial, and his resurrection. If we believe, which I know I believe, and I hope you believe, that the death is repentance, that burial is water baptism in his name, and that the resurrection is the infilling of the Holy Ghost or living a resurrected life. If that has happened, this book teaches that we have been seated with him in heavenly places. Not going to be. It says we have been seated with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 and 20, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. One chapter later, Ephesians 2, 6, listen. But he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Jesus is sitting up there, far above all principality and power. So is his church. We have the anointing. We have the apostolic ministry. We are anointed to preach deliverance to the captive. We are anointed to preach the receiving of sight to the blind. We are anointed to preach the opening of the prison to them that are bound. We are anointed to have apostolic revival. And I've come here for one thing tonight. We're going to chase the devil out of this building with the blood, the word, and the name. Oh, no. I understand. I realize that there is a tyrant on this earth. I know there's a tyrant that has oppressed us. I know there is a tyrant that opposes God and his holy angels and his holy people. In fact, when you study the scriptures, there are three very strong portraits of Satan and his approach and his method of operation in God's word. In Genesis 3, 1 through 5, he is 
known there as a subtle serpent that connotes craftiness and kindness and trickness. And he approached with the charm and attract and entice. He was a very subtle thing. The second description in the Word of God is 2 Corinthians 11. The Bible said that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. This indicates religious deception and scriptural perversion. Satan's glory is not to primarily always take people into gross and guttery sins, but sometimes it's religious profession without spiritual possession. He'd rather have a sinner in the church than a sinner in the gutter. He will be more valuable to Satan's kingdom in the church, speaking his say without power. If a person insists on being religious, satanic forces will provide a comfortable brand of religion that will deny the power of God. I stay away from anything that don't want anything to do with the power of God. I don't want to touch anything that doesn't believe in miracles. I don't want to be around anything that doesn't believe in signs and wonders. I don't want to be with anything that don't believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the apostolic power and the operation of the gifts in the last day. I believe it. Third example is in 1 Peter 5 and 8, where he is as a roaring lion. Notice it doesn't say he is a roaring lion. It says as a roaring lion. This represents a violent effort to consume you. He approaches with valuable insight. He approaches with psychology. It is an appeal to the natural human appetite in an effort to pervert God-given desires. People are tempted through their own flesh. I know since I have been preaching in the last two nights, I know since Brother Cole taught what he taught the very first service, he and I are in total agreement on the authority we think the devil has and how much we have over him. This flesh is our biggest problem, but that's what the devil uses. He will take the thing that this flesh wanted for God, and he will pervert it and use it for his kingdom. Well, I don't think you can prove that. Well, I think I can. I think First John talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That's the biggest downfall. It's not the devil. It's the lust of the flesh. It's the lust of the eye. And it's the pride of life. But the devil comes on the scene and he uses those things against individuals. And tonight, the devil is unleashing every spirit, every emissary from the pit of hell that he has. He's going to be assaulting. He's going to be attacking. He's going to be coming against everyone. He's making his one last stand because he knows he has but a short time to work and it's going to all be over for him. He is through the flesh and through spirit attacking our families, attacking our homes, attacking our churches, and attacking individuals and especially the minds of our young people. We are in a spiritual Armageddon. You better realize where we are. I didn't say Armageddon. I said spiritual Armageddon. This is the real mother of all battles. This is where it is the kingdom that is far above all other principalities and spirits that the devil will make one more challenge before the Lord takes his church home. But, Mr. Devil, you've already been defeated. <laughs> Throughout the war that we just came out of, our president on news conference, after news conference, kept telling the public, Mr. Saddam Hussein is making a terrible miscalculation. Did anybody ever hear him say that? He is making a bad miscalculation. And sure enough, he did. <clears throat> but I want to tell Mr. Bush something. Excuse me, President Bush something. It wasn't just a miscalculation of our army against his army. 
But where Saddam really made the wrong miscalculation was when one day in prayer to his God Allah, he rose up and said, the war will not be between America and Iraq, but it will be between our God and their God. That's where he made a mistake. tell you why it was over in 100 hours with less than 100 casualties you don't come against my God for they that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit you made a miscalculation Mr. Devil and I will assert notice on you in this camp meeting at 10 minutes after 9 on July the 10th, 1991, you that's been attacking our families, you that's been attacking our children, you that's been attacking our marriages, and you that's been attacking our church, you've made another miscalculation. For out of that persecution, that's getting ready to come an apostolic revival. That's going to come a deliverance that's going to set the captive free. My brothers and sisters, let me take scriptural deliverance and give it to you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong means to acquire strength and to increase in strength. It don't mean just get strong and then quit. It means keep getting stronger. I want the devil to know if all the hell breaks loose, I'm not backing up. You got to let him know tonight, I got my foot on the rock. I've got my mind made up. You know, all the hell come against me. Put on Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be to stand against the wiles of the devil. That means that a person can stand again. That's what it says. It says that you can stand again. That means you can stand against it. That means it's not going to knock you over. That means it's not going to flood you. That means you can stand against it. We must be told again and again, God has equipped us with powerful weapons to defeat the devil. And it's the weapon that's going to defeat him. There's nothing like Monday night's message. Intercessory prayer will bring the devil down. The sweet lady in our church who is now an intercessor, she brought her daughter in to see me a year and a half ago. Her daughter was bound with cocaine. But her daughter was with a group in Alexandria, <clears throat> That were pushers of cocaine. Our church don't even know this. Seen some of them walk in since I've been preaching. For the LJ is here and others. <clears throat> They'll hear it now. Find out more about it later. She was involved with a group that said if she got out, that they were going to kill her. It was a very strong group. That mother came to me and said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to pray. But I want you to bring that girl in for counseling and you come with her. She walked in there. She told me her whole situation. I said, I can't do one thing if you don't want deliverance. I said, but I can take you to a God that if you want deliverance, he'll deliver you. I am here to testify that that girl has been delivered. I am here to testify that girl got the Holy Ghost. I am here to testify that girl has been buried in the name of the Lord. I am here to testify that the Godfather of her the other day passed away, and now she is set free from everything she feared down here on this life. Because there was one mama that knew how to intercede. Brother, the Lord does not want us just to shout. He's given us something in this book, not to be afraid of the devil. Thank you, Brother Cole, for your lesson. He don't want us to be afraid of the devil, nor his tactics. See, it's not so much the devil that's powerful, but he's a sneaking thing. 
And so God took this book and he said, let me tell you about it. He called him Apollos. That means he'd like to destroy, but he can't. He called him Belial, which means he's utterly worthless. He called him a serpent, which means he works by crooked means. He called him the devil in 1 Peter, which means he's an accuser. He called him an enemy, which means he wants to confuse you. He called him the fowler, which means he'll set a booby trap for your soul. He called him the God of this world, which means he wants to blind your eyes. He called him a hinderer. He called him an imposter. He called him a king in Luke 11, 14. He called him, though, the father of all liars in John 8, 44. He called him the prince and the power of the air. We were in Louisiana camp meeting last year. Brother Barnes asked for the coal. We have evening sacrifice in Louisiana. And they asked Brother Cole during that evening sacrifice. Said, you bind the prince at Palatine here around this camp meeting. And Brother Cole told Brother Barnes, he said, I will. But he said, every time I do, I have never failed to see a storm come after I bound those flute foot. Brother Barnes said, well, do it anyway. He said, okay. He stepped up. Brother Cole prayed the power to bind the spirit that would hinder anything taking ruling over the principality. It wasn't 10 minutes. It started lightning and thundering. Brother Steve Spears came up on the platform with a note. He said, there's a storm coming with 70 mile an hour winds. Leaned over and told Brother Barnes. He said, that's no problem for me. He said, let me have the pulpit, Brother Tenney. He said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the wind. I rebuke the storm. They came back five minutes later, said the storm went around us and hit DeVille. He's a questioner. The Bible calls him a roaring lion. The Bible says he's a tempter. The Bible says he's a braggart. The Bible says he is the wicked one. Yes, sir, there is a real devil. Yes, sir, he wants to make every one of us his yoke fellows. He wants to hitch up with you. In Scripture, it talks about actual spirits. They were intelligent beings that the Lord had to deal with. But he spoke to them, and he spoke to them directly, and he spoke with them with much authority. And every time the Lord spoke to a spirit, that spirit came out. And we have been commanded as the church with the governmental authority of Almighty God on this planet to open the doors and set the captive free. There is no other way. There is no way out except to be, if we are a spirit-filled church, then be a spirit-filled church. The devil is so shrewd he is not powerful, but he takes the things of God and he uses them. Last night I told you in preaching how that he takes the gangs now. They have taken the love that is supposed to be in the church. And now the thing about a gang is the reason why they are growing is because they protect their own and they respect one another. There's something else that the devil has taken, that the church is supposed to be using. That is supernatural power. Well, you're off base. You can't prove that. First of all, I can prove it by what I've seen. Second of all, I can prove it by what I've read. My brothers and sisters, if you are here somewhere on the backside of Arkansas, and you don't know that the New Age movement is alive and well, I don't know where you are. They operate with their diamonds. I don't know if you know anything about witchcraft, but witchcraft is sweeping the world. I know for sure that the New Agers now work with mental imagery, the projection. Brother Cole warned us so capably today. He said, you better make sure if you say you have the gifts of the Spirit, that it's the gifts of the Spirit and you better not practice ESP. Why? Because that's a tool of the devil. They know how to project themselves. They're having supernatural. Why do the New Agers have so many people following them? They are sweeping this country. Your movie stars, Ted Turner, 
who now earns all, owns all the major television networks. Why is he a new ager? Because they are operating in mental imagery, which is they believe that through the power of thought, they can heal cancer. They can gravitate people. They can float people. They can move chandeliers. And they have been doing some of those things. Well, beyond to the church, if you think that we get to the 90s, when all of this is happening and the devil is having a supernatural revival, we're going to have more than a pat of cake for Jesus. I'm not going to be satisfied with just a choir number. I believe that God is going to give us a supernatural apostolic move of the Holy Ghost. That's why I'll get away from my notes and preach a little bit. You better not follow the signs. You better follow what's being preached. Now, if we're preaching what's there, signs will be there. But I don't care if somebody can heal. I don't care if somebody can make somebody float. I don't care if they can make eyes cross. If they don't preach the apostolic message, I don't want anything to do with it. These signs shall follow them that believe. You've got to first of all believe doctrine. You've got to first of all believe truth. And then God said, if you'll put this word in you, then miracles will come behind you. Power will come behind you. Authority will come behind you. But I made up my mind, I've got truth. And I'm not going to let the devil sit around and do these kind of supernatural things. And the church sit there and turn its thumbs. Not on your life. I am determined to see miracles, signs, and wonders. People set free, scripturally, by the power of his name. Now, you don't know what you're talking about. You just got a hole in your head because I can prove it scripturally. Moses came to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. He said, well, let's have a showdown. Moses said, okay, let's have it. Moses threw his rod down. It turned to a serpent. Let me ask you something, preachers. Did his magician? What happened to there? Huh? They turned into a snake too. They could perform miracles too. But our snake ate their snake up. That moved Pharaoh a little bit. He said, let's have another showdown. Let's turn water into blood. Our boys did it, but so did the devil's boys. You're know, looking like, like I'm telling a story. It's in the Bible. Then they went to blood, water to blood, then frogs. They kept following. Then lice. But finally, devil's boys reached the point where they couldn't go no further. And our boys just kept on going. And the devil's boys finally had to say, that is the finger of the one true God of Israel. <laughs> Let the new ages work. Let the humanists do their thing. Let the devil worshipers do all they want. But we're going to reach a point where that's all they can do. And God's going to say, I'm going further because I'm above our principality and power. I've got a star above it all. <laughs> Alexandria, we had an apostolic revival breakout. People here tell you not long ago. And so the Satan Church of Alexandria decided they were going to bind our revival. So they started praying against us. They started coming against us to church down on 3rd Street. They said, we're going to bind that preacher. We're going to bind the mangans. Now, they may have a good chance against me, but they're talking about seniors. they got a problem. We're going to bind the mangans. We're going to tie them up. And we're going to pray for that church. And it's going to fall apart and disassemble. You know what we did? The intercessors went to their faith. We intensified prayer. And I want to tell you that leader called them back together and said, I have been all over the country and never have I seen a force as powerful as that. Leave it alone or are they going to tear us up? Back away from them apostolics. 
back away from the Pentecostals. They're going to tear us up. It ought to be that way in every city. It ought to be that way in every town. Let the devil know I'm a Jesus name. Do you know why? Well, I'll tell you. For this purpose, God Almighty was manifest in the flesh. Why? To destroy the works of the devil. He was one God because he said, there wasn't one before me. There ain't one after me. I don't need no help. I can do it all by myself. I'm going to earth and I'm going to destroy the works of the devil. So I manifest myself in the flesh. I didn't send Junior. I didn't send the second person of a fictitious trinity. I didn't send a member of the board of directors of heaven. I'm going down there and to destroy him myself. Vance Havner said, we fear the devil. I like what Vance Havner said. He said, we fear the devil. He said, have you ever thought, how many, how many ever at any time in your life, now watch this, half of them lie. Some of these people, they got pleurisy or something, they can't raise their hands in Arkansas. But how many of you have ever had a problem with the devil? Would you raise your hand? Oh yeah, they're getting better now. <laughs> Old writer of books, you know what he said? He said, that fellow you afraid of, let me tell you something about him. The devil was so weak, he backslid when there wasn't even a devil. And you're afraid of him? I'm afraid what the devil's going to do to me. Listen, if I got the Holy Ghost, get out of the way, devil. I can storm hell with a water pistol. The gate can't stand against the church. is down here for one reason destroy the works of the devil we're here tonight for one reason destroy the works of the devil we're here for one purpose destroy the works of the devil maybe see brother it takes pressure. It's not emotional pressure. It's not physical pressure. I've seen them. Come out of him, devil. Come out of this man, devil, right now. Or man, come out of this devil in this case. You don't get him out by shaking him. You don't get him out by screaming at him. You get him out by spiritual pressure. You know what intimidates the devil? It's going to surprise you. Thought he's going to say talking in tongues, falling out. The word of God. It's the man of the word that's inside of us. I have heard the word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I'll tell you why the devil knocks some of you around. As he said, it's not your Holy Ghost. Your Holy Ghost isn't to keep you from sinning. The Word's what keeps you from sinning. You get the Word in you and every devil will run. You get the Word in you and every devil will flee. It's the Word. I'm not talking about black and white pages. For the chance, I'm not talking around, walking around the house with this, just saying, look here, devil, get out of here. It says this, get out of here. I'm talking about living word. I'm talking about, Paul said, we are epistles read of all men. I'm talking about being a walking Bible. When the devil sees me, I want him to start running. Say, my God, there comes the word of God. Get out of here. There comes the word of God. Have a devil will flee. There's nothing like our Lord. The Lord is king. People sit around talking about God. My Lord, do you know who God is? He made everything you have. And he lives inside of me. That's an awesome God. And I want the devil to know something tonight. I'm not backing up. Listen to me. If I never get a prayer answered, I'm not backing up if everything else in the church backslides. I'm not dropping the standards if everything else drops the standards. 
I'm not dropping the apostolic message if everything else, because I'm not living it for them. I'm living it for him. So the first thing you got to make your mind up is, is I'm in this for keeps. I'm not in it for the supernatural, though we're going to have it. I don't have to see chandeliers swing. I don't have to see people leap out of wheelchairs. I know this book is true. He's left me with a promise. And if I never see another miracle, I believe this apostolic message. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were three Hebrew boys that got thrown in a fiery furnace. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar called them before him. He said, boys, undoubtedly, Babylonian bell didn't ring down where you live. Now, you work for me, but I want to tell you something. If you don't bow to my image, I'm going to fire you. Come on, Arkansas. You'll get there in a minute. Get up here with me, little devil. Yes, sir. Baby. What does the word of God say? Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them. Now, listen, listen what he said. Is it true? First of all, is it true? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do not ye serve my God. You don't want to serve my God? What's your problems? No, sir. No, sir. No, no, no worship. worship the golden image which I have set up. Uh-huh, verse 15. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the mandolin? No, no, no. Sasek, but forget all them names. Go to verse 16. You're having trouble. Shadrach, like Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. Now look at the last verse, though, of that, of that one. Look at this one right here. And who is that God that shall deliver, deliver you? you? Out of my head. He should have never asked them. Oh, he, did what, he did what Saddam Hussein did. Yes, he he did. should have never asked them who their God was. He's Don't ask us world. who our God is. He's the first. He's the last. He's the Alpha Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And beside him, there's no other. There's no one like him. There's no one before him. There's no one behind him. Don't ask me who my God is. He's the Father. He's the Son. He's the Holy Ghost. All three, they're one. He's God on the platform. He's God back at the door. He's God in the amen corner. He's God all over the floor. Don't ask me who my God is. <laughs> Come up here, little devil. I need you. Boy, he dropped this watermelon. He messed up bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. No, no. It said Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did what? Answered and said. Yeah. Let me ask you a deep theological. We got Canel here. He'll straighten you up if you miss it. Okay. Up. Did all three of them answer? That's what it says right there. It Shadrach. says Shadrach. That means they had their mind made yeah. up before they ever yeah. got in there. We ain't bound. You come by your captain of the high <laughs> One of them didn't answer. No. Two of them didn't answer. No. They'd already talked it over. We ain't bowing, Mr. Devil. My God. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Woo. Where were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Notice what they answered and said to the king, O Nebi, we, we are not careful. not careful to answer thee in this matter. We don't even have to think about it. Man, no. <laughs> if, if it be so, our God whom we serve... Now, now this! <laughs> Not our God who we just go to church and look at. No, no. Not our God that we just talk about. We got a lot of them saints. Yes, but the God whom we serve. <laughs> Some of you need to get to serving him if you want him to deliver you. Now notice what they said. They said, we know that our God is able to deliver us from the furnace. That means they didn't know if he was. They just said, we know he's able. But notice what happens. Keep reading. And he will. And he will deliver us 
out of thine hand. We don't know if he's going to deliver us from the fire, but we do know he's going to deliver us from you. Hey, devil, I don't know if I'm going to get out of the fire, but I am going to be delivered from you. We know he's able, but we don't know. But look what they say. But if not, but if not, Read. be it known unto thee, O Nebi, O king. No Nebi was good. We will not serve thy God. Notice what they said. We know he's able. We don't know if he will. But if not, we ain't bound to your God, and that's where you got to get it. I don't care what comes against me, Brother Canal. I don't care what I got to go through. Devil, you can't put pressure on me. That's going to make me worship you. There is only one God. I will worship no other God. be seated. I've got 30 more minutes of preaching, but I'm quitting because the Holy Ghost told me to. Listen to me. The Holy Ghost told me to quit, and I, don't, I didn't want to, but he's telling me to because something great's getting ready to happen in this building right now. I've been on this campground for three days, and some of you have confided in me, and there's been an attack on our kids. Specifically, preacher's kids. Brother Yoey had a boy that wouldn't live for God. He said, my boy's messed up, I'm on drugs, so I'll just go open me up a lighthouse ranch for boys. We'll do war, will you, devil? You got my boy right now, but I'll do war with you. If I can't reach mine, I'll reach everybody else's. So he went down. How many's heard of the Lighthouse Ranch for boys? His boy's been gone for years. And old Jim yo has been pulling his neck around, getting his fingers ate off by fish, and go around just building lighthouses for boys. He came to me Monday night at camp meeting. He said, Brother Anthony, guess what? I said, what, Brother Yoey? He said, my boy called me today. He said, he told me, Dad, I'm tired of the way I'm living. He said, Dad, I want to come back home. Dad, I'm going to get everything right. Dad, I'll be a Thursday night camp meeting. Dad, I'm coming home. Hey, guess what? He's come home. His daddy's meeting with him. He's getting his life in order. No, no, devil. You just thought you won a battle. You get your hands off of our children. Get these altar benches up here for me. Get these altar benches up on that platform for me. Get your hands off my children. Last week, another type, another type of attack 
Brother Demerchant's boy, our missionary to South America, his boy had a tumor come up under his shoulder. And the tumor grew to where it broke his arm. It destroyed the muscles and it spun his hand out. He had been taking chemotherapy. And he said, I want to go to that main camp meeting and see that prophet. I knew he was going to say me. But he said, Billy Cole. I'm just the son of one. I'm not one. But he said, hey, Mama, take me to here, Brother Cole. Brother Cole had something come up. He had to leave a day early. And Brother Cole wasn't there. So we had a dilemma. With accepting one good thing. Jesus was still there. He didn't have any hair. They'd been attacking him with chemotherapy. And that little boy's arm was turned out. And that night I preached on Friday night about what God could do. Not this message, but one like it. How God could heal. That little boy, my wife is sitting right here, bald headed as he could be, seeing the effect of cancer, had some preachers lined up across the front. Some preacher don't know his name. They don't even know if he's ever laid hands on anybody and they got healed. Pastor some little home missionary church. Wasn't Brother Anthony? Wasn't Prophet Billy Cole? Wasn't Brother Urshan? Just some little preacher over there. But oh, was he ever mad at the devil. And oh, was faith ever locked up in his soul. Little old brother the merchant walked up to him. That little preacher said, in the name of Jesus, that preacher just preached about it. I cast you out, you cancer devil, and I command you to go. That boy said, I'll hit him at the top of his head and begin to flow through his body. That arm popped in. The muscles began to grow on that arm. And that boy was instantly healed through the power of the deliverance of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want everything in this house to stand. I want you to put peer pressure out of the way. I want you to forget what anybody's going to think. I am so sick and tired of trying to wonder about what somebody's thinking, what they're saying, or what they think about me. What I want you to do is, if you have a child that is bound by spirits, if you have a child that their life is messed up, if you have a child that's in the critical years of teenage, you get to the front of this church as quick as you can, and everybody else stands. <laughs> Come up here with me, Brother Cole. Okay. Uh-huh. Stand right there with me. Hmm. Did I preach the word? Did I preach the word? People, if I've ever heard from God... I heard from the Lord this afternoon in prayer. I don't know if everybody is, but I know those that want it, their kids are going to be set free tonight. I pray for the devil to get his dirty, filthy, nasty hands and spirits off of them in the name of Jesus. Now, preachers, I want you to hit this front, and I want you to minister. Then we're going to pray the prayer of faith. Don't anybody leave. I'm not through. I'm just getting started. We're going to knock the devil in the head. I want you to take somebody by the hand, take somebody by the hand, take somebody by the hand. I want the congregation to hold your hands to the front. I want you to pray with me, the power to deliver. In the name of Jesus, on the authority of your word, I command you, devil, you spirit, to take your hands off of these children. I command you, devil, to release them with the word, with the blood.
Receive it, Brother Hassel. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it, my brothers and sisters. Devil, take your hands off of their kids. Set them free. children's going to be saved. In Jesus' name, my children are going to be saved. In Jesus' name, my children are going to be saved. In Jesus' name, my children are going to be saved. Somebody rejoice with them. Somebody rejoice with them. Somebody rejoice with them. Brian, rejoice with them. Rejoice with them, brother Carl. The children are going to be saved. Now, I want everybody in this building, this is going to be a touchy one, but the way I'm going to do it, they won't know whether it's you or you standing in for somebody. Well, that's embarrassing to me. Then keep your problems. Everybody that's having marital problem, or you know somebody that's having a marital problem, and you want to stand in for them, come to the front of this building. That's a tough one. This don't mean these people do. They're coming for those that do. They're coming down here for those that do. Man, I'm in the will of God. Stay with me. I promise you, I'm in the will of God. <laughs> Hurting people. Now, these are not all together. Those that's having problems, they're standing here for those that do. Mr. Evil Spirit, that's dividing these homes. I am taking authority over you, and I am binding you. I am going to set these marriages free tonight. We are going to have a deliverance tonight. I'm telling you, devil, you take your hands off of these homes. You take your hands off of these people. You take your hands off of these marriages. Now, come on, church, help me pray right now for deliverance for these homes. <laughs> that home is not going to break up. We are not going to a divorce court. It is not going to be a divorce. If it has been, God can put it back together. We're not going to take that answer, devil. We're going to bind you in Jesus' name. We're going to take a thought over in Jesus' name. Now, you grab that and with you by the hand if that's why you came. Or whoever you came with, you agree. You walk back to your feet. Say in Jesus' name, this marriage was meant to go. And devil, you're not going to get it. And worship God all the way back to your seat. Ah, uh -uh, you're not good in that marriage, devil. Hey, just a minute, brother. I'm not right now. I can't talk to you. Fear the Lord, though. 
Now, I want every preacher and his wife to come to the front of this building. Get on the platform. Get up there on that platform. Hey, so I... <laughs> Cross the front. That's good. Say hello, boy. I'll kill you. I'll teach you more. I'll teach you more. I'll teach you more. I'll teach you I got a word of the Lord for you. When Chuck Yeager was trying to break the sound barrier. Just before he broke the barrier, he said it felt like every rivet in that plane was going to break loose. Before he broke through, the turbulence was so strong that it broke ribs in his body. Finally, he broke the sound barrier. Here's the purpose of the story. The turbulence that he broke through remained, but it moved from the front of the plane to the back of the plane to where he had control over the turbulence. Understand, until the rapture takes place, there will always be turbulence in our churches. There will always be spirits to fight. There will always be kingdoms to conquer. But God wants to do to the ministry and the waters tonight is the turbulence that's been tearing you apart. And the turbulence that's been tearing your church apart, it's not going to go away, but it's going to move it to where you won't fear it no more. And you can keep on fighting. You can keep on winning. And the battles you came, the problem may still be there, but you're going to be able to handle it. If you care anything about a preacher at all, if you care anything about a man of God, I want you to put your hand toward this platform. I want you to bind every devil in hell. And when you get through, the cold is going to pay the prayer of deliverance. <laughs> Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the authority of your word, and the power of the name of Jesus, I speak strength into every one of these preachers just now and their wives. Let the peace of God abide in their churches and in their spirits and in their souls. And let the authority of the Holy Word of God go forth with power from their mouths and from their hearts and from their spirits to minister to their people. Let the peace of God abide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every rebellious spirit that has risen up in their churches take authority over this rebellion in the name of Jesus and let the people repent oh God in the name of Jesus Christ let the power of God go forth let there be unity and strength and peace and health in the
please like, comment, and subscribe.